Hello, my name is Steve Voorhees, and in this session we're going to do a very auto quick installation. But before we get started, we're going to go over the installation requirements, data storage considerations, and the installation steps. And this will consist of utilizing SQL Express that's included with the product. So we'll go ahead and start with the requirements. So before we get started with where you're going to install this. You don't want to install it on a domain controller or an exchange server. You want to make sure all the OS updates are installed and the machine is restarted. You also want to install the server-side exclusions prior to downloading and installing Varyauto 360. The supported operating systems have to be a 64-bit OS, can consist of Windows 8 or Windows 10, Server 2012 or 2016. For this installation, I'm going to use Server 2016. The hardware can either be a business class desktop with at least a quad core i7 processor and no less than 8 gigs of RAM, preferably more. For the installation uh, disk requirements, 40 gig free. However, uh, I would recommend that if you're going to do this for POC for your customers, you start out with at least 100 gig. That way they have some room to grow and to uh, mess around with the settings. You also want to make sure .NET 4.6.1 is installed and it will require restart. All these other components below will get installed automatically. Varyauto 360 uses some various ports, this one being the key, HTTPS 443. Now you'll want to make sure that this is not bound to any other services or applications running on the machine or we will not be able to open it up. You can change this port during the installation. The other ports are meant for communications with the browser and the SQL service. Alright, so next we're going to go to the antivirus exclusions. Now since we're installing the server side, we're going to click here, and these are the different areas that we're going to want to exclude. So you can exclude by a risk name, and each product's going to have a different one, for instance, Semantic and Trend Micro. You can click here to actually see what those are. And you can exclude by folders or by file names. I'm going to do both. The reason for that, some antivirus solutions will not allow you to exclude by folders or allow you to use wildcards. So what I'm going to do is include the folders as well as all the files themselves. As you can see, these are them with their locations for each of the major components. There's quite a few, as you can see here. So what we're going to do to make this a little bit more streamlined is um, we have a PowerShell command that will allow us to uh, input those exclusions into Windows Defender. Now I mentioned we're using it in Server 2016. Defender is built in. So you have to add the exclusions prior to downloading, prior to installing. And that PowerShell script is available to you from our tech support department. Next let's look at the data storage considerations. So it's going to cover the server, the database, file storage, and backups. Now the first section here is a daily average, and this is an estimate on a particular user's activity and how much we're going to record and consume with this based on the server. For recon data, it's approximately 0.4 megabytes. For the data stored in the 360 um, database, it's going to be approximately 1 megabyte. Could go below, could go above. For the screen snapshots, it's roughly 36 megabytes, but this could differ depending on how many monitors the user might have, the size of those monitors, and the resolution. By default, for one user, it takes a photo every 30 seconds, and that is configurable in our data collector. Then we break down in this graph here um, how many users, and kind of gives you an approximate of uh, daily recon data, daily 360 data, and daily screen snapshot data. Give you a rough estimate here. And then we kind of give you a three month projection too. And we go from five to a thousand users. So I mentioned it's going to install SQL Express. Um, this will all be on prem, of course. And you do have the option to use Azure for cloud storage. All right, and then below we got option for SQL Express, and that's what I'm going to do for this installation. Now, here are the quick few steps. So we're going to walk through every one of these, but I'll kind of give you a glance of what you're about to expect. So it's very straightforward installation as you're about to see. Okay, without further ado, let's get started.
So I mentioned first off about the port 443. So what I want to check is my firewall settings to see if there's any applications already utilizing that port before I do the installation. So to do that, we go to Windows Advanced Security. Then we want to go to Inbound Rules. And you could sort these columns of the local port here. And as you can see, we do have 443 being utilized here. All right, but this one's okay. Now, if you had a different application that was already utilizing this, you will want to change the port during the installation. So next, we want to add the exclusions to Windows Defender. So I'm going to just verify we don't have anything in here. As you can see, no exclusions. Now I mentioned the PowerShell script. So that's right here. And here are all the exclusions that it's going to add. So this is from the help document that I went through earlier. And to run this, I'm going to just elevate PowerShell as an administrator. Okay, once that's done, we're going to do exclusions underscore add. Right click, run with PowerShell. And there we go. Let's go back and verify that they're here. And one more thing this uh, is going to do is disable Defender's real time scanning during the installation. There they are. All right, so now that we have the exclusions in place, I just want to verify it is disabled. And remember, if you have a corporate AV or essentially managed AV, you want to put the exclusions in within the central management console, have that policy replicate down to the machine acting as the server, again, prior to doing the installation, and if possible, temporarily disable the client side AV. So Defender is disabled. I'm good to go for the installation. Okay, so let's go ahead and close PowerShell, go back a directory here, and I'm going to go ahead and run the very auto setup. Depending on your internet connection, this could take anywhere from a few minutes to a half an hour. It's roughly about 678 meg. To run it, you'll want to right click and run as administrator. Now we're presented with a splash screen. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. You want to make sure you go through the EULA. If you agree with it, click Accept, and then Next. If you forget about the AV exclusions, it's going to remind you here. So how to disable your particular AV, how to exclude the files, and then the files and folders. Now I mentioned we're going to do a quick install. There are other options here. You can install Management Console only. You can install with the options and you can install only the database. This option would be if you're going to install a database on a secondary server and just a management console on a primary server. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the default paths. You can change these during your installation. But again, if you're doing this for a POC or an eval, just leave the defaults if possible. Then next, it's going to check to make sure you have enough hard disk space. Now we're going to create a master login account. You have the option to use an email account if you like. I'm not going to use that. I'm actually just going to create a login name. The last option is how do you want to send the alerts. Veriauto does include an email relay if you don't have your own mail server. If you do and you want to utilize that, you would select this option. For this situation, I'm going to use our built-in one. Now it's proceeding with the installation. Depending on the speed of your machine, this could take anywhere from a couple minutes to a half an hour. There's where it's adding the firewall rules. Generating the SSL certificates right now. Adding additional firewall exceptions. And now it's going to install SQL Express. 
during this portion of the installation you may think it's hung up but it's actually working SQL Express does take a while to install so just have some patience and it will eventually uh, progress on All right, installation is complete. So we just click finish. There's the login screen. But before I log in, I just want to check that firewall just to make sure the port exception was in there. And there it is. Verify that my server name in port 443 is there. Now you'll want to go ahead and put your product key in here and then click activate. As long as the server has internet connection. If it does not, because it's in a closed network, you'll want to check the box for alternative activation. What that does is it creates an HTML file. You bring that over to a machine that does have your internet access and then it will allow you to download a text file. This button will change from activate to browse. You'll browse for that text file and then click activate. That concludes the installation.